Jeremiah asks, how do you become a construction worker? Step by step, I want to join. Let's find out. Clap for the money, you know how we bang. Blow a step for the money. Mic check one, two, mic check one, two, mic check one, two. What's up everybody, Ruben here with another video. It's gonna be a nice and short, quick video. It's actually only gonna be three to maybe four quick steps on how to get started in the construction industry. And I got some notes, so I'm gonna be looking away from the camera just a little bit. Step one, make the decision that school and a suit and tie just isn't right for you. It's a hard decision to make when you're young, but we all hope that it works out as we try to figure out this thing called life. Step two, do your research intensively. Don't just listen to someone who's in a specific trade that you think you might be wanting to get into and take it as the gold standard, even if it comes from me. So do your research on what kind of trade it is that you want to join. If you even want to join a trade or you just want to be a laborer, but if you want to join like the carpenters, electricians, welders, steam fitters, operating engineers, elevator, escalator, which I've been discussing a lot in my comment section, that's actually the best trade to join is escalator elevator. I'll get to that towards the end of the video, but let's just run through these steps. Step three. You don't have to go to a school, but if you're young enough, I would suggest you do. But try your best to find a free school like the one that I went to or some sort of BOCES program. There's usually some sort of trade program that works with your high school. If not, maybe try to find a high school that's around your area that has that sort of program and then just transfer over to that school. Definitely go to school. For me, that would be like step three. But you can skip out on, go on going to school. You don't have to go to school. But if you're young enough, if you're within the ages of 18 to maybe all the way up to 25, I would suggest go to school. But to a free school. If you're going to go to like Apex or Lincoln Tech, I don't suggest you go to those schools because they're like ridiculously priced and I don't think the education is worth the value that they claim, especially in the construction industry where not so many people really care about the school, but it does put you at an advantage if you have the time. If you're over the age of 25 or maybe even 24, I would suggest just diving into one of the pre-apprentice programs where they're going to send you to their trade school and then you get to learn from there. But the benefit of going to school is that you actually get to maybe play around with what kind of trade it is that you want to go for and you don't want to like get locked into one trade and then feeling like you're forced to go there every single day. So for example, when I went to a trade school, a lot of people bounced around. Like some people did the carpentry thing for six months. They didn't like it. They switched over to the electrician thing. They did that for six months. They didn't like it. They did the welding thing. They did that for six months and they figured that they did like it. So they stood there, got all their licenses and certification, and then went straight into the union from there. But had they not gone to school and tried out all these other different trades, they probably would have just joined whatever trade it is that they got into. And for some reason, like morally or whatever, you feel like you're stuck there and you don't end up moving on even though you say you might in the future but you just don't end up moving on plus you don't want to put time into a pension and a apprenticeship where you're making top dollar after four years and then what you really want to go do is be an electrician or be a welder but you already finished your apprenticeship in the carpenters or the tapers and you're making over 100 grand a year you don't want to go back down to 40 grand to start all over again step four i wouldn't suggest anybody get into the construction industry with Without a union but if you do happen to go against my advice and you do join the construction industry without a union my suggestion would be is to find a company that works with some sort of an apprenticeship that way you're not stuck being a day laborer for 50 years or 40 years so basically try to find a company that would treat you as an apprentice whether it's an electrician a carpenter whatever it is they give you an incentive at the end of the year where you're gonna get a two three four five dollar raise and you'll become a second year apprentice rather than a first year uh, laborer and then the next year and so far and then at the end of your five years they're going to tell you that you are now a journey level electrician or a journey level carpenter or a journey level welder whatever the case may be whatever trade it is that you do join if you do decide to go non-union which to me is absolutely ridiculous like union workers make as much as company owners of non-union businesses make and they don't work as hard and they don't have all that all those headaches that an owner has and you're still making over a hundred grand a year so for me it's, it's kind of a little bit ridiculous to go non-union but some people have a lot of myths about the union on how we do the same work every day or we can't touch other people's work which legally we're not allowed to but that's not the way things happen in the real world but let me finish off with the last step step four put your time in work hard and watch your life pass you by that was a bit of a stretch but in construction 
the work is extremely hard and you're always chasing your overtime because you're already showing up to work for $55 an hour. So why not show up to work for like $80 an hour? Why not show up to work on a Sunday when it's double for $110 an hour plus the annuity and the, and the vacation pay and the benefits and everything else. So you're always kind of chasing your overtime and you're kind of losing a part of you and a part of your life. And before you know it, I mean, I did almost 11 years in the Carpenters Union in a blink of an eye. Like I just left high school and uh, went to the trade school and it just all happened so fast and now I'm 32 years old wow about to be 32 years old in two weeks by the way so so yeah that's pretty much it for me as far as the four steps to join the construction industry I would say try to get yourself some sort of education background that way when you actually step into the real world like the the real construction industry of building stuff and repairing stuff. You're not as behind as everybody else is. And that way you get to get a little bit ahead of everybody else also. And you get to give a name for yourself from the beginning. So like if people see you as a first year apprentice and they're like, oh, this kid really knows what he's doing. Oh, this kid's really a hustler. Oh, this kid has one up on all the other apprentices. He's smarter than the rest of them. It'll give you a name for yourself. And that name that you give for yourself from the very beginning, from day one, will follow you all the way through. There's over 25,000 members, but for some reason, all the jobs are small. Yeah, those are my four steps to get into the construction industry. If you are going to go the union route, I'm going to leave some links down in the description below where basically I talk about the different trades that there are. I don't mention the elevator operators. I mean, I'm sorry, I do mention the operator engineers. I don't mention elevator escalator because that trade is so small in the union world. There's only 3,000 members in New York City and it's so small that it's pretty much almost like the operating engineers, but even worse. It's like father and son, who you know, not what you know. So it's a very hard uh, trade to get into or a very hard local union to get into, not a hard trade to get into because there are city jobs like the MTA and other city entities that have uh, elevator escalators. Um, workers or whatever you call them, technicians or whatever it is, but they make top dollar and their benefits and everything just doubles when they do overtime. So they don't do time and a half, they do straight double. So if they're making 50 plus dollars an hour, they go straight to 100 on overtime. Elevators always on escalators also, but elevators always break down in the most inconvenient time. So the overtime's always going to be available when it's crunch time, when a building or whatever it is, just finishing doing all the repairs and all the infrastructure and everything else, the elevator is usually the last thing to go up. So there's always a crunch time for overtime there. I'm not saying that you have to work the overtime. I don't know how they're structured. If they do like the carpenters do, where if you say you don't want to work overtime, they tell you that uh, they're looking for full-time workers. They're not looking for part-time workers, even though you're doing your 40 hours, but they, they just don't like it when you say no to overtime. So let me not make this video longer than it should be because then I got to edit more. Plus I'm going to lose the attention of you guys. So ladies and um, yeah, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos like this. My name's Ruben Lopez and I'm from New York, son.